movie's at. Right. Hey, someone recommends to do a He was racist. He really recommends to do a lot of racist ass moves. I'll show you. Talking Normies, it's Talking Normies Straight up racist ass bro. Hey, what up y'all, it's the Talking Normies Podcast We out here, a bunch of Talking Normies on the podcast And this month's movie topics is Drug Month Woo! Drug Drug Yeah, dude Once again, I'm, shit in America. I'm not sure why I'm here <laughs> Well, because you live with me and you actually watch the movie And Mickey is sick By a byproduct of you sitting and watching me watch this movie You, you also become. watched it I have qualified, mm -hmm. though that movie was something. You got big dick oh. energy. There sure. That's not a drug. Movie was a bit of a trip. Ha -ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we'll get on to the movie, but until then, we're going to be doing our weekend catch ups. What are you goons been up to on the weekend? Let me start because mine's boring. I drove to Atlanta. I drove back from Atlanta. That was the weekend. That was the weekend. Oh, um, shit. What did I do this weekend? I know I did something. I'll go. Go. Um, I went to another soccer game. Another friend of mine had tickets to an Indy 11 game. Where did and, you sit? Uh, we were in the stands, kind of like on the, like we're right, we're at the bottom. Like we're right there on the field basically, but like halfway, I guess. Me and you need to go. I'm going to see if they're playing either this weekend or next. We need to sit in the fan section. I'm going to show you how to do Indy 11 the proper. Fan section? It's the one when, oh, when we God. score, where all the fucking smoke comes out of, where people are playing drums uh, and. Also, That's the place to where, sit. Where, where is this? I'm down to go to. Bro, it's is it good? From IUPUI. My apartment. It's so is Indy Eleven good? Sometimes. But like, but <laughs> I remember, lost. I remember going to IUPUI games at the. Is it called the Carrollton Carrollton Stadium yeah. or whatever? It, the stadium was like not as impressive. Did you go when Indy Eleven was playing or when it was like when IUPUI was? I was. I, I it was probably it. IU or an IUPUI. Like it was probably college teams. Indy Eleven is. But like, I'm just MLS, like the stadium right? wasn't impressive. It's like, how could you get like the like the rod rod like you know? Sitting, at, Marquetta, will you please speak on the fan section? You're the only other person that's been. It's fun. All right. <laughs> okay. No, it's Ooh. fun. But I also went to a game in Turkey, so. You turkey, I, 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 I can see what turkey like though. Turkey is next level. Did they need in Turkey, the they literally had the the like um, visiting teams fan section in like a cage, so they wouldn't get hurt. <laughs> That's so fucking <laughs> dope. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. Uh, Indy Eleven is our own soccer team here in town, or ULS team. Yeah, ULS, not MLS. We need to get an MLS though? team. It was cool. They lost, but um. You mean we lost, yeah. comrade? <laughs> oh yeah it was our team we lost um had a lot of fun i hadn't seen uh that friend in like a while so it was like it'd been a while since we got to chill so it was a good time nice that's the main thing we did the, the point of an indy 11 game is to sit out in the cold or when it starts to get warm it's nice and warm and to sneak in a bunch of pocket shots drink those pocket shots and then yell at professional athletes yeah and when you're in the fan section, it's great. There's little songs you sing, and you all get to yell at the professional athletes. And it's this. a good time. And then my guy Gordon sells ice cream there. So at halftime, you walk around, you grab ice cream from Gordon, you come back around, you hang out, do more. There was one year where we were all damn near blackout drunk, and for whatever reason, they had, like, bubble soccer. And they're like, who wants to play? And, of course, it ended up being me and all of our – you're in a big bubbly ball. Oh, God. And <laughs> you're trying to play you soccer. Yeah, right? That's so cause they can't, And so you know me. I'm big as shit, and uh, we're just bodying boys left and right. Our one guy is, like, damn near throwing up. He's stuck upside down with his feet in the air. <laughs> Indy Larry games are great, but they're, like, it's not about the sports. Yeah, it's not that for sure. yeah. about all the other stuff. Pat, what did you do? Um, Saturday, I had a going, uh, well, a going away party for my niece or her cousin. Um, she, Where is she going? She's she going to Hawaii on a church, church mission trip. Is it your niece or your cousin? Well, and so she's technically my cousin, but like she, like she refers to like when we come, like as uncle. She calls you uncle. Yeah, I, know, yeah. I got you. Okay, nice. She on a church mission. Yeah. Well, she a little she spreading Christianity out in Hawaii. Yeah. I think they got it out there already. Yeah. I know. Yeah, they do. But you know her church is going. She's gonna go there. How long she gonna be there for? For the summer. Damn. Follow. It's not that even is summer awesome. yet. Awesome. Well, <laughs> you know she she's gonna go. Damn. Until after the summer. Okay. Yeah. I'm oh, jealous. I, I How old for is summer, she? But more school. Yeah. Huh? How old is she? She just uh, she's going to graduate. I think this year. Yeah. This so year. seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. Um, Can you have to Jesus. speak up there? What? This was a background noise. Damn. Yeah. 
Anyway, What'd you my do this weekend, sucker? weekend was very boring. I deep cleaned my house. Tight. So I instead want to talk about a weekend I'm looking forward to because I don't speak here very often. Next weekend, I'm going to an opera concert. Woo! Uh, Andre Bocelli. Yeah. Andre hey. Bocelli. I'm very excited. And, um, yeah. Very foo-foo, Pat. It's, um, it's like, he's like the most fa- popular um, opera singer just because he doesn't just lock himself in the opera genre, I guess. He, may, he had songs with like, Famous people like what's his name? Buster Rhymes. Ed Sheeran. Uh, <laughs> Not Buster mm, Rhymes. Awesome. Pretty tight. But yeah, he's just like you know, he makes pop pop songs as well. So nice. Hence his fame. Hmm. I'm is really looking the, forward to seeing him. Is that the monthly lady skulk, or is it just like a you think? No, it's my birthday thing. Oh, Who's nice. all going? Nice. Okay. Uh, moi. Uh huh. You. Me moi. Your mom. Oh, mi madre. And Navi. And nice. Auntie Navi. Auntie Navi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hell yeah. Nice. Well, yeah. fuck. We're pretty excited about that. Uh, was like, it here in town? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't know we had an opera shit here in town. Yeah. I, I mean, where's he playing at? At the uh, Bakersfield. Yeah. So. Or whatever it's called now. Conseca. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Sure. I bridge. thought you got to be like an uh, actual opera house. No. It'd be to nice, do opera. Because no. don't you need acoustics and shit like that? No, yeah. man. It's not wrong. I mean, it would be better, but yeah, you know, we'll we'll see. It's we gonna sound. Technology. Hopefully, it's not as loud as Bill Burr was, right? <laughs> oh God. Uh, yeah. We'll bring you earplugs. All right, bet. So, off of that, onto the new shit. We've been playing a lot of Hell Divers, and by we, I mean me and Spidey. We are out here fighting for democracy. Uh, Marquette is currently playing Halo right now, so she is on her way to being able to figure yeah. out Hell Divers. Yeah. Work, work. <laughs> Uh, Hell Divers also is third person, so you like that better. The main point of this conversation, see, Mickey was supposed to be here, and then me, Mickey, and Spidey were all going to yell at Pat to play Hell Divers. So we're going to do that now. Pat, right, why are you Pat, gonna, yeah, yell play, Hell play Hell Divers. Play Hell Divers. It's what scary. Is wrong I already with told you. I'm playing Hell Divers, bro. Do it for democracy. Don't you like democracy? Yeah. Mm, Sounds like not. I like anarchy. What the fuck? Fuck! He's oh my with the God. bugs. He is with the Kill bugs. Him. Good God, if I've ever seen an automaton in my life. Right? <laughs> All right, so Pat, the game, while it is, it's shooting bugs and stuff, it's, it's it gets more and more fun. It gets more and more challenging. Uh, you get to, like, call in space lasers and shit, right? Mm-hmm. Big old lasers. So bro. you're trying to take over the bugs' town? Yeah, we're oh. the bad guys. Yeah, we are. We're coming through raining democracy on bugs. Democracy. Because we're not going to let them fuck up our way of life yes, on Pat. their planet. That's what they want to do, Pat. The bugs want to take over so everything. why robots are involved? Because that's the other side of the galaxy, all right? We yeah. need both sides of the galaxy. We can't just take care of one side and not the other. Yeah. Because Super Earth needs, needs this. Yeah. So Super is Earth like zombies, needs the whole galaxy. Like where no. you just kill a whole bunch of bugs and you just last around? No. No, I mean, no, no. you've got objectives to do. Sometimes you shoot a nuke and everyone has to salute the nuke. Well, yeah. it flies off to blow up some goddamn <laughs> bugs. Yeah. It's incredible. The, the way they got lighting now in games, watching this shit explode, you're just like... Everyone stands close to the nuke so it knocks you back while you salute. For Super Earth, Pat. For super Earth, bro. I would do if there was no bugs involved. You're and tripping. You could just tripping. do the automatons. In my head cannon. the automatons, we made them so that they could kill the bugs for us, and then they got their own sentience, and now, now they're a problem, too. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, and you can just is, do the automatons. The game is still developing, and not still developing, but like the story yeah. of the game of like what's happening is all being made by like one dude. So, so like you'll jump online, it'll be like, hey, the automatons are attacking at this planet. You guys have to do this thing, or something is lost. And yeah. apparently, there's something that we didn't do, and now on Super Earth, no one can have babies. It's like, fuck, <laughs> Super Earth can't have babies now, and it's our fault. You must get out there for democracy, right? Babies. We gotta take that planet back but now. I, so how do you win? Oh, this is like it's together. like because y'all know are you like there's like when you guys squad up there's only four people it's four yeah. against everybody right yeah we complete the objectives so only four so how do you like so how you beat the other teams on there there's everyone's working yeah, for super working for the, the only goal. other teams are bugs and robots and they're losing oh yeah. so there's no like pure like one squad win winner or anything like no. that no oh that's kind of boring Oh, no, you say that. Because there's no competition. So you're going up against a, a bio. Yeah, the competition is you can, the uh, enemies. You can check stats at the end and see who did the best. But, like, the bugs, are there, just, are there a lot a lot of bugs where there's enough oh. bugs for, like, the whole squad to go after? Yeah. 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 So, so there's a big-ass map. 
called a bio titan yeah. and it's huge it like will tower over the studio and it's all big and you gotta like oh my god you gotta call an air support bro yeah. get the 50k uh, in here oh, oh, you're you ready to gun one word no uh, no you gotta get the auto cannons bro you never know you got strategies and stratagems yeah you gotta, you gotta have a good squad man Keddy's gonna play you know why for democracy for democracy for democracy huh especially once you're done with halo like it's pretty much you know it's it's Same a back. much harder version of Halo, really. Once I'm but done it's... with Halo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good game. It is a good game. And you can play, I played, a, they've got a mode called Trivial, which is super easy, really easy to get into. You can do it by yourself. It's it's super fun, and the map oh, is super nice. small. But I like frolicking in the fields of Hyrule. I know you like frolicking mm. in the fields of Hyrule. We're trying to get you to the planet where they have fire tornadoes. No. Fire it's tornadoes? Crazy. Yeah. yeah an ion oh, a tornado on. fire? Yeah. yeah. That is fucking cool. You gotta avoid well, this I got that. But this is game had bugs. I'll be playing it if it didn't it's have. It's weird that's your only problem with it. Right. We're gonna because make it makes scary ass noises when it fucking, you know. Maybe you want to try Halo. What sounds did they make in Halo, Keddy? Work, work, work. That's not bad. <laughs> 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 All right. All right. It's not bad. You're calling in support. Um, so we have a show coming up that we're going to be doing soon. Uh, so this is a brief portion where we're going to tell you about these new things coming up. One, we are still working on Carousel. We're going to have the first episode finish here soon. I'm um, doing the last music parts. We're going to have a little bit of snippets that we can share with some select members of the audience. If you're Ooh. interested in knowing more about Carousel and doing some of the testing for us, please uh, get up with us on Damn. the social medias. And also, we have a show coming up called The Patchler, where we're making Pat go on a date. And so. now... We're going to prep Pat for the patchler. Oh, my oh. God. Why am I here? To help prep Pat. We this need is, a lady. Yeah, Pat this is the fourth is time I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. All right. So, Pat, what yeah. is, what's your plan here? First step from Chris is what are you wearing? I'm wearing, I think, what I'm kind of wearing right now. I feel like no. this. No. No. See, I know you guys don't no. like the Crocs. I know you don't like the Crocs, but hear me out. It's not that we don't like them. What is, <laughs> but hear me out. Yes. I feel like ladies, like guys, were confident. Uh -huh. Do you know why? Right? Do you know why you're single? No, no, no. I, I want to hear this. Confident <laughs> trendsetters. Yeah, they, 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 they were like they like somebody who's confident, and people who are trendsetters are confident. I'm, I am setting a trend right here. You're saying she doesn't matter off top. <laughs> what do you here mean? Immediately with these shoes, letting her. But know, you know, you I, 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 I wear some playful socks, and you know, like you know, make it look nice, you know. I have a plan. Oh, my God. It's a simple plan. All right, so you're going to wear what you're essentially wearing now. I feel like, because look, I got nice slacks on and nice bun down. Okay. I'm a, I, I agree with those feet. two things. I don't agree with the shoes. It's the shoes. Hello, Internet. Also, we're doing a podcast. Should Pat wear these Crocs over here on his but, first but, date? But look. Nice. Look at the socks. Your socks look the like sock you game. stole them from the a grandma. Game. He doubled down and said that the socks help. Is what I have a problem with. <laughs> they it's do. Like, no, they don't. <laughs> All right, we're, 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 we're gonna see how that, that that's gonna go by the time we get some answers for that. Okay, cool. So that's what you're wearing. Chris says, do exactly this with non Santa Claus socks <laughs> and regular shoes. Regular that's shoes. That's it. Exactly what you have on now. But with like, you see, if imagine if Spidey shoes were on your feet and we couldn't see these Christmas socks. These socks are an equivalent of a sweater vest. But they're yeah. so comfy. <laughs> The comfy. Exactly. You know what? And exactly. if you're wearing shoes so with proper pants, vest. we won't see it. You're in corduroy All socks right. talking about I'm going on a date. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, Pat. Well, Spidey, you, what question did you have for Pat? You want to uh, rizzle me was, this, rizzle me that, right? <laughs> literally. Rizzle me like this. Yeah, I was um, off the top of my head. I do want to know what your icebreakers are going to be. My icebreakers. Oof. Icebreakers. Yeah, yeah, you got three different girls you're gonna be seeing, so you need three different icebreakers. Yeah, what's your opener for conversation? How do you mm. start? What's what's first date setting? Uh, I think it's shop. gonna be at a coffee shop s kind coffee of place. Shop. Perfect. We're sitting down. We got our drinks. I don't know. I I, I usually just fill them out first, you know, just talk to see their vibe. But I don't know, like my openers. Okay, so be. let's. So how pretend. do you feel their vibe? I don't know anything about them. I mean, let's just a solid. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. Yeah, you're on a blind date right now. There's pretend, a person in front of you. Can't see. Him. What do you say? Well, no, no. Pretend to per it's me. So, <laughs> but I'm a girl, obviously, in this situation. <laughs> Christina. Yeah, Christina. Christina. <laughs> okay. And I got nice long hair and fat ass and tight titties. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, yo. All right. We sat down for coffee. I got my coffee. He said, looking at you. Bring a literal ice pick. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask you what color your panties are first. Because see if it's my favorite color you're wearing. Well, I'm not wearing any because I'm commando. It's a first date dummy. 
Why would you say that? That you can't. She's gonna leave. She's contractually obligated. That is not to leave. no. <laughs> the contract says she can leave. Oh whatever. My God. We're paying her to stay there. For what this. are we just doing now? All right, sex Patty, trade? do better. <laughs> All right, so reset. Sitting there. What's up? What's up? All right, solid icebreak. <laughs> solid. Okay, we're gonna have to work on that. Yeah, we, we gotta figure some figure some stuff out. <laughs> so what's this? Please stop doing? it. How are you doing? Yeah, this is all boring shit. Okay, what Maybe. are you, what are you having? We're at this coffee shop. You know what? But, what's your have style? You, been that's, here you know, listen. That's you can, all the boring stuff. How do you that's start also start the conversation. How do you start a conversation? What color? All right, fine. Uh, you ask her what color her panties are. She says, "I actually think that's a really inappropriate thing to say on the first date." Maybe no, but I'm trying to figure out if we're compatible because you gotta see if I'm wearing my pants color so your favorite Bruh. so uh, all the other compatibility. things compatibility hey, hey I, we're, we're, we're dating so all those other things about me don't matter you want to know the color of my drawers fine pat i'll tell you they're chartreuse is that fucking chartreuse you? this nigga don't know this nigga need a color palette <laughs> <laughs> i have i've come up with a few things that i want to make sure you don't say on this don't day. say don't say do not say top of the list what color are your panties is a number That's one don't say awesome. Do not refer to sex. Why? Just, we're this, just, gonna, just you'll figure it out. Don't but, ask to hit it and quit it. Don't tell her you want to come and go. <laughs> Nail Do and bail. Do not say shit L-O-L. and quit. Do not say I want to hit the poon, then leave real soon. <laughs> These are all things that I found that have really been said. All right. (laughs) When I was talking, you know, I was like, wow, it sucks what you women have to go through based on what I've been reading on Reddit. Are people real? Yeah. Also, do not say I need to ejaculate and evacuate. (laughs) (laughs) And the good old basic pump and dump should never Uh, come into your mind. But why not? It's it's not the, I'm it's trying not to be a star. Maybe but like why why are we trying movie. to have a boring ass day? I'm trying to have some interesting conversation. Okay, I feel like you can find interesting. Yes, conversation so conversation about what? What conversation? Maybe about- I know, if you want to talk strictly about sex, go for it. You we can't try. keep you from doing that. So you're gonna ask her what's your sex based question that you're asking? Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. So butt stuff. Like what? Is it? <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's your question. <laughs> First day we sat down. I, I, I assume you know her name. It's, it's Christina now. And you're like, so butt stuff. And then she says, well, honestly, I don't really like talking about butt stuff. Is there anything else you want? Fine. Butt stuff. I don't like it. I hate it. Oh, that might be a problem. Because you're exclusively in the back door nonsense. <laughs> He's in there with a next. <laughs> we picked Pat for this because Pat's single right now. And he wants to mingle right now. I guess we know why. <laughs> okay so girl number two then pat she sits down it's going poorly with the girl number one she walked out because you kept asking her about her asshole yeah she thought that that was a little weird All you asked her about was panties in her ass <laughs> girl number two sits down her name is brianna it's josh josh ah. all right so you're sitting down with josh she sits down and mm-hmm. you say what's up you look fit do you oh, work out thank you i do i love working out where was this? Fucking slut over here! <laughs> what the fuck? Pat thinks I'm hot confirmed. <laughs> what the fuck? You need but the you hair, got bro. That ass. You, you need the hair, bro. I, I don't hair. know why I'm offended, but I am. Chris, you got the booty. We could. I, I ride bikes. Damn. Okay, fine. So you're asking her about the gym. <laughs> And she says, "She's like, of course I do. I rock climb. Ah, you rock climb? Yeah. <laughs> There's no rocks in Indiana. Where are you climbing at? Oh my god, I go to this place indoors all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Women giggle a lot. I think <laughs> it's a much better girl than I was. I need to step up my game. Yeah. Why am I here? Okay, <laughs> so that's pretty good. All right, and now you're on to girl number three." Uh, Martricia. Martricia. Martrus. Martrus. Kind of like chartreuse, but not the color. <laughs> All right, you sit down with Martrus and you say. So um, it looks like you're expecting. Are you going to expect a baby daddy too? Martrice, how will you respond to such a thing? Are you calling me fat? <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm just saying it looked like you're expecting. <laughs> so you were calling me fat. I'm just asking you. Right, he's asking, are you expecting? Yeah, you expecting. 
I'm expecting this conversation to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pat. So you've been walled. Next question. <laughs> See, I, it, it could be anything. Like, anything in your head. It doesn't matter. You just need the confidence to ask. You know, if you still want to pry, you could say, like, do you see yourself with children in the future or do you want to have kids in the future? But see, Isn't it something that would interest you as, as, as in a prospective mate? You yeah. know what? Think about the things that would not interest you and ask those questions. <laughs> <laughs> the shit that you don't care about just pop one of those off just one good time I feel like they'll be gold too mm. it's like wow what's your favorite color actually or yeah. what's your favorite right. movie or what do you do for work the last chance with Martrice you need to ask a question mm -hmm. just ask what do you got what I got are you right winging or left winging I'm a How? socialist socialist yep what the fuck is a socialist well Socialist um, is not represented by the right nor the left as it exists in the United States. So if I have to pick, I guess left, but not really. Not really. So you're in the middle. You're the right. You're fence sitter. No. No, I am further than left. Oh. I am the actual left. So you just want to get free shit away. No. I want to get free shit. <laughs> <laughs> She said, why are you thinking about okay. this? Okay. That <laughs> See, was good, though. You that was you good. Yes. We actually we had a politics. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Politics is always a, a hard one to go into. It's scary for a lot of people, so they avoid it. And if you go into it, it does. It shows a little a level of intelligence. And honestly, I think, I mean, to me personally, that's an important subject. Yeah. I need to be aligned with my partner on this. I have a question, though. How about uh -huh. we don't align, but the person is hella. Sp how about a Spidey? Uh -huh. She works out and everything. She yeah. eats right and everything, and all that good stuff. Yeah, but she's hella Trumpy. Okay, is that a deal breaker for you? W but I'll, it'll be okay with me. That's but would it be okay man. with my friends? Oh, but you don't date for your friends. Are you yeah, dating you for don't. approval? Yeah, uh, yeah. But no. If you brought somebody who we all disapproved of, but she made you really happy, I really wouldn't give a fuck because I, I love you. Even man. though she's like straight up Trumpy as fuck. Oh, I guess would, what? I would stand her I in don't, person. I personally yeah. don't think a Trumpian person would date you just because what? of no. them being Trumpian. No, no, no. They probably would. I mean, but they probably wouldn't approve of your friend. Like, here's the thing. You could bring her around. She could try to be combative once and you're going to be like, guess what, bitch? <laughs> we got, we've been waiting for the numbers. It's like, bam, 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 bam. But I'm saying like, she probably just wouldn't come around anymore. Most of the so, people that, that go to the gym are Trumpies. So I know I you and I know you don't really fuck with Trump. So he said why... she's better than a motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <Hotter than> <laughs> okay. <stone. laughs> so hit it. But like. <gasps> <laughs> and what, what Marquette? Hit, 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 hit it and run. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. That's an actual felony. <laughs> Committing fucking crime. You sit on the podcast full of dudes for one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Marquette just said hit it and run. Right, the evil just <laughs> seeps <laughs> in. Hit and run. I'm feeling the masculinity in the room. <laughs> Oh my God! So, uh, <laughs> yeah, the truth is, is yeah. If you wanna, if you end up dating a Trump supporter, I mean, that's fine. Your dick ain't my dick. I don't really give a shit. She might not come around a lot. She might not come around a lot because, like, we gonna be on our shit. That's just what we own. We're or, we're not switching it up. Or mm -hmm. politics would just never come up in the group. Like, I'm, no, I'm sure they will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you met us? <laughs> there could be a moment where maybe we're just all about. What? Yeah, no, yeah, I don't know. Something's gonna come Sunshine up. Sunshine and puppies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Eli says he's surprised you didn't say fucking flee. <laughs> <laughs> Eli is onto something. That's a good one. Um, oh, I was gonna say tap it in taxi, but that's not quite it. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So it sounds like we're setting up for what can only be described as uh, I'm gonna call it a rolling shit show, but it should go well. Yeah. I think it's gonna go well. Yeah. I'm, I'm worried. I'm so scared. If any of those women happen to be watching this podcast right now, which is totally possible, <laughs> yeah. and Honestly, they still agree, then indeed, right? 
<laughs> He's like, I, I, listen, I, I, I always, I, I'm, I'm like Michael Scott out here, so. That is not. That is a wild yeah. take. It's like you watched the show. Yeah. You saw how he was. Such a great guy. It's a weird flex. <laughs> it's not the brag you want. <laughs> You know, Michael Scott is somebody who just like fails upwards, and there's really no, no action of his own that made him go up. Because by all logic, he should go down. Yeah. Okay. Through all but of he his, defies through logic. All of his actions. The most logic. under underdog story out. He defies logic. So from Eli, we got Move Her and Uber. From Watchdog, we got Looter and Booter. And from Faded Appetite, we have Lift It and Quit It. Did you say Looter and Booter? Looter and Booter. 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 Right. Baby girl, I'm trying to loot and boot. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, God, Lord. Oh, God. I also have some scenarios that we'll go over next time. Stick it in plain too. So, so Pat, I, I have a question for you. Yeah. Obviously, physical attraction is important to you. You talked to uh, jo- what was what was your name? Jo- oh, Joshi. Jo- Joshie. Joshie. Um, Joshie. Joshie. So yeah, you, you talk about you know working out and stuff. You don't care so much about you know p- political leanings of this person. What other things do you care about? Like, how do you want to make sure that you're compatible with this person? Compatible, damn it. <laughs> That'll be season two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dear Lord. Bachelor, compatibility. <laughs> to be, I, I really don't think about that kind of stuff. What was, what was the last girlfriend you had? It's been a while. What, did, what things did she have that made her be your girlfriend? Other than being hot. We all assume she was hot. What else was it? Magic <laughs> Oh, she was just n- nice to everybody. Okay, so you like niceness. Mm-hmm. Nice. What else okay, about her? So, like, what good manners? Good manners. You know, just being polite, not being. Uh-huh. I'm, I like, I'm the asshole, so I need somebody balancing me out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Did we just like, remove a layer? We peel need, back that onion, Shrek. You need the front part. Because if she comes in and she's just a dick, you're gonna be real upset. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but so, are you, are you like gonna listen to her advice if she tells you you're doing something wrong? That's the hard part. Yeah, that's the hard part. See, I was young back then, so hopefully not grown. How old were you? I would say probably end of college. So 24? Mm -hmm. Where'd you meet her? College. What was her name? Saria. Saria? Mm -hmm. That's a cute name. Yeah, cute name. Brown girl? Mm Mm-hmm. Nice. Was she a Trumpster? I think she would be now. Damn. You don't have her on Facebook? No. You have a type? Huh? You have a type? Not really. Sounds like it might be Trumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> Politically leaning Trump. Okay, nice. So look at that. We, she was nice, mm-hmm. and she was hot, mm-hmm. and she lets you put your dick. And she likes dogs, I assume. Well, I didn't have a dog then, but the one thing is that was that was a no go. Was the goddamn coconut hair? What, coconut what do you mean hair. By coconut hair. Yeah, that's 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 what cut it off. I was like, I couldn't do it. What so that, you what broke up. Oh, 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 oh wait, because she didn't like shave her. No, she, I'm talking about she. Her hair <laughs> smells like coconut hair, bro. Like you know, it, what, just the smell, the fragrance the, of coconut, coconut in her hair. Yeah, that was. That's why you broke up with her. Like, it did was, you try to tell her that you don't like the smell? It's an Indian thing, so I just didn't like. I probably she probably does that as soon as she was born, you know. So it was just like it was just <laughs> time every out. time when laying down, it's just like, that's that's. How long we got together? Not that long, because I couldn't deal with that. Six months? Oh, Less than that. my God. It was the coconut. Okay, so you didn't think, <clears throat> well, the only reason you broke up with her was because of the smell of her hair. There had to be something. <laughs> there had to be other stuff. It, she was like she was very needy and all that, but. Needy and attention? Yeah. Okay, so you want someone who is a doesn't little more independent. Attention. Yeah. Okay, and doesn't put coconut in her hair. Yeah. And that's if, that's a very low bar. Like, right? yeah. like <laughs> she didn't do anything else. Like, but she was just very needy. Like, I always had like I don't know. It's like if, yeah, it was just she like every day she needed a detention. Okay, so mm-hmm. you want someone who's more independent, mm-hmm. who I works out, goes to the gym, but who's also nice mm-hmm. and doesn't put coconut in their hair. There we go. It really sounds like you just want a gym right. trainer. <laughs> it's like you want someone to work out with. All right, how about that? I think 
Man, I don't know if you guys are excited. This is I feel like this is the most in depth pat we've ever got. It is. <laughs> Start off with chartreuse colored panties all the way down to <laughs> What is chartreuse? It's kinda like this color almost. Yeah, green? green. Yeah. I have a picture of it. Chartreuse. Chartreuse. Here you go. Oh. You don't fuck with lime it's green like panties? Like a pea, pea color. You don't fuck with lime green panties, Doc? Sure, bro. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about our sorry video. We're going to talk about one more thing before we talk about the movie. Uh, I just heard recently on Philip DeFranco, I'm sure you guys heard too, there was a monkey torture ring that was worldwide. What? I really I wish did you didn't not. bring it up. Bro, we were, what happened? What? I didn't listen to Philip this morning. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago. All right, so uh, they shut down this guy. He was living in Virginia and he had a telegram operating where he was paying people in Indonesia. People would pay him. They would be like, hey, we're not going to talk about the kinds of torture, but torture these monkeys in this way, please, for me. And he would take the money, keep some of it, pay some dudes in Indonesia to do the torture, and then he would live stream it. And they finally shut him down. Uh, I was fucked up. Huh. A lot of baby monkeys. <clears throat> and um, I bring it up because we're watching the Planet of the Apes yeah. movies. Yeah. Kind of feels like. That's kind of fucked up. Kind of feels like they're really trying to be like, let's piss these motherfuckers off as hard as oh, yeah, we can. Yeah, so you could take yeah, over. Man. <laughs> Yo, so so is, there was, he was live streaming the torture? Yes. So there must have been an audience like that. that, yeah, that there was were, a big ass audience for that. Money. They were paying him directly. Probably not a big audience, but an audience definitely paying yeah, to Telegram's see it. A little private, I guess. You know what I mean? Like even if it was only fifty people, they were paying him this probably is weekly. So fucking depraved. It is, and it he like bragged about sense. it. Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, it makes dollars. And my question is like, so was it something that I've never? heard of you know what i mean like that's fucking not heard of like is it illegal is he going to oh, get in yeah. trouble for it or so is it just- the yeah, guy- animal cruelty in most countries is illegal yeah. yeah he got caught i forgot how much time he's gonna do uh they got the guys in i was gonna say jakarta but just indonesia they got the guys in indonesia but they only had to do like six months because that's like the maximum for like animal torture or something See, like that. that's what i was saying so like how yeah, bad so is he's gonna go, go back was- out there and do it again like, yeah six well i mean there won't be a lot of audience be, they're, they're, they're Did breaking he get down fined? I don't remember. They're breaking down the um, the like the logistics of it all, so it won't be super easy to start back up. But yeah, that that's all. Hi, we, We're watching. Adam. I don't think he should be able to keep any of the money he made out of this. Yeah, I feel that. Oh, that yeah. should be like donated to like <laughs> nature conservation groups and Lucky. animal fucking protectors. Right. I don't know. Peter's always out here going after people with pit bulls and shit. Peter, why don't y'all go fuck some right. actual motherfuckers up? Why don't y'all go do something? Peter, I mean Peter is. One, not the only organization dealing with this, but um, I mean, there's also there's a lot of like dog fighting rings in the U.S. Yeah. still active. <gasps> so that's I just wanted to make you guys aware of that because when we watch the next Planet of the Apes, I want that to be in the back of your head. <laughs> Great, thank you. And we had it coming. To transition off of that, here's our quick non-spoiler review of Animal. See what I did there? Animal. Holy, what the fuck <laughs> is that movie even about? Uh, Pat, it's about the animal that lives inside all of us. The thesis alphas. of this movie is um, that an alpha male gets shit done and beta males write poetry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's, that's the why poetry wasn't oh, invented. So, no. that, so that betas could use their water like bodies and their big brains to get ladies, woo women. That's who are it. also weaker than betas, okay. maybe, I guess. I don't know. A lot of shooting, yeah, um, mainly shooting. A lot of blood. Well, what's another point? Uh, oh, the the not a lot of singing. Hey, hey that's a plus. Ah, you know what? <laughs> that, that, that's a in Bollywood movies. That's a big plus. There's there a, a lot, lot of, of daddy moments. issues. A lot yeah. of daddy issues. A lot of moments where I thought they were gonna burst into song and dance, and like it didn't happen. Oh no, that's good. Music's low key kind of fire. Yeah, music is good. There is one singing portion, and it's done during an axe fight. Ooh! Oh my God! And that scene goes hard. It goes like, hard. Yeah, that's my. All right, I'm gonna have to check scene. this shit out. Yeah, you think uh, what NBA playing still? Yeah. So uh, when when there's not a game and you need a stream to do, it's that's on Netflix. Uh, yeah. We're all suggesting that you watch mm. Animal. I will. I because will. Because we want to know just how toxic can it get. <laughs> oh all right. My God, is it not made for men? It is made oh. for men. It yeah, that's it. That's movie. the only. It's the only. The demographic. <laughs> they said, "Who are we making this movie for?" And the dude just said, "Men, men." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, bet. Well, well, hold up. Before we get to the movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You want, want to talk about some basketball? Yeah, yeah I want to talk about some basketball. So this <clears throat> Tuesday, um, I was doing the Stairmasters, and I really don't watch women basketball that much, uh, and it's really just because 
they don't really get marketed that well. But this year, they're marketing women basketball well because of this girl named Ke- uh, Caitlin Clark, and she is really, really good. Um, I mean, you're able to watch the NCAA tournament on ESPN. So that's Caitlin what I mean. Clark, you look said? her up. Yep, and she's like one of the few females that's able to put up 40 points three times in the tournament scene that's so that's really fucking good and she rem- like she uh, like when i was watching like usually i watched women basketball before and this has nothing against women basketball but it's like everything's just a little bit slower um and like because the the shots the shot making is not as high as in men's basketball and you also don't see as like as many dunks or highlight dunks as in men's basketball so it may not be as exciting but she was able to but she's she's going to change the women basketball because she plays like Steph Curry. We all know who Steph Curry is and how yeah. he plays like. And the way she moves, she moves like Steph. She shoots like Steph, and she could pass like Steph, and dribble like Steph. She is she is probably going to be the next female basketball that everyone's going to be known. Like everyone, like she's going to have be... her own shoe. And she, I mean, we already have one like Sabrina right now, and that's like played with against Steph and that All Star. But I think she's going to be just like Sabrina. Um, but the way she just played the game was really, really good. I heard though that it was gonna be the Bayou Barbie. I heard that it's Angel Reese. So Angel Reese? Yeah. Angel I watched That's what I heard. That Angel from Reese. My family. I don't know a lot about Angel, the sports. Hey, so, and, and, so, I was yelled at for not no, knowing no, names. No, no, no. <laughs> listen, and then, then this is this is what media is doing right now too, because these Angel Reese is good. <laughs> but I don't think she's Caitlin Clark good. She does not she will not transform basketball as Caitlin Clark would transform basketball. Okay. Um, because Clayton Clark, she is able to like the way she moves with the ball is just like with Steph Curry and Angel Reese is she's playing basketball in a low post manner and she's not playing outside of the three point line. Like the the four is moving like her position is dying. Her she's to play in the four position. Okay. And that position is dying because everything's become more a little bit more fast paced, a little bit more ball ball movement, not as more many as pick and rolls. So. She, that that type of playing style is done. So she won't be as dominant as Clayton Clark. She's good, and I know the drama is going on, and the, that's the. Pr- I hate the media pinning those two together. It is it's so stupid, like because like they call it against the good versus evil, and then it's so stupid because like he, obviously they're putting good on Iowa and uh, 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 Clayton Clark because she's white, and they're putting uh, Angel Reese. She's from LSU, from down there, and her majority of the teammates are black. So th- I hate that shit that the media is doing, but. In reality, Clinton Clark is better than Angel, Angel Reese. Though. Okay, that sounds like it might be a. It's just a basketball opinion. thing. All right, look. but from purely basketball, as per, like as a person, I don't know how Clinton Clark is or anything like that. From basketball, I'm, she is. I text my cousin about this, and I'll let you know if he yells at me or not. That's yeah. how I'll know how other people feel about it because we don't know anything. I will say, since you started talking about basketball, we jumped up to twenty-seven viewers. Nice. <laughs> I don't know. I guess maybe talk more about ladies basketball. I think Pat's uh, other compatibility issue is, I guess, being able to keep up a conversation about sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if a lady could talk yeah. sports with you, is that does that do it for you? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be sick. That'd what be if great. she's into like? That'd be great for you. Come weird on. sports, like highlight hurling. Her, oh, see, her. see, uh, <laughs> or she's a pole vaulter. A pole yeah. vaulter, then that means she could do the pole. So you know, it's all good. All right, that is definitely what that means. <laughs> all right. So for everybody who's been participating in the movie club, one, keep participating in the movie club. Two, like, and and I don't mean to be rude to our fans, so I mean this in the most loving way possible. Are y'all niggas watching these motherfucking movies? <laughs> like, are y'all? Where do you at the podcast for? Do you not? Why aren't you watching the movies? I'm confused. Like, don't get it. I, I, maybe you're just here to hear us talk about movies and that's cool too but why won't you watch along what do I have to do to make you watch a movie do I have to come to your house are you assuming you they're not watching yeah, how are you assuming because they're watching it with me sometimes they watch that's it with true. Pat I'm just saying right now for everybody there's 29 of y'all in the chat Oh yeah, and, yeah, and, and Chris don't want to go off on you but I'm just curious why you're not watching movies. you don't have to I just want to know why I just want to, I just want to make sure this isn't a futile discussion about yeah Kyle Las Vegas. I'm right. calling you out Yep. Okay. at 11 11 Make a wish. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't know what happened. There. That was weird. I guess there's. Yeah, I want to talk about this movie. Uh, there's a lot of characters that I did not. Oh, I could not believe that they were in this movie. Before yeah. we get to that, I have to 
give you a rundown on the movie. Yeah, because what the fuck even were they? Like, were they yeah. even reporters? Yeah. What, what, what were they and also doing the, the, there? The, and the, the amount of shit they were able to get away with and nothing could happen to Bro. them. They were wearing Teflon the whole movie. So, Hunter... Stockton Thomas was an American journalist and author. He rose to prominence with the publication of Hell's Angels, a book for which he spent the year living with the Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club to write firsthand account of their lives and experiences. Now, the interesting thing about Hunter S. Thompson is that he developed a style of new journalism, a subgenre of journalism called gonzo journalism, in which a journalistic style in which the writer becomes a central figure in participating in the events of the narrative. So let's say, for instance, we were journalists and let's okay. say we were covering PopCon. Okay. Then we would go to PopCon, experience it, and then write about it. Oh, like blog it? Yes. Okay. So essentially... You yep. can almost draw a straight line from vlogs for from vlogs to Gonzo journalism to Hunter S. Thompson. So Damn, okay. Okay. The way he went about things like before then, you know, a journalist would like maybe interview people but he put himself in a situation, right? Like, sure, you could write what it's like to do L S D based off of second hand accounts, or you could do a bunch of fucking acid and then write about it. But was that his job? I thought his job was to cover the race, not to do drugs. <laughs> Yeah, see, Ask I was him. Also wondering. And he's gonna tell you. Because <laughs> yeah, they, it started out there, and I was just like, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, they, they got they got the job. They're focused. They're doing their thing. All right, there's some drugs involved. That's a little weird. Maybe they should calm down because they're naming drugs that are I never heard. Of. I heard of. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, a, a little more about Thompson. Uh, Thompson remains best known for Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, 1972, a book first serialized in Rolling Stone, in which he grapples with the implications of what he considers to be the failures of 1960s counterculture movement. We're going to get back to the counterculture thing because that's kind of important. It was adapted for film twice, loosely in 1980 with Where the Buffalo Roam and explicitly in 1998 with Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. So, the 1960s counterculture would have been like hippies and shit, right? Like mm -hmm. Woodstock. They show Woodstock like at, yeah. uh, on the TVs yeah. and stuff, and like anti-Vietnam War, anti-Vietnam War, the free love movement, mm -hmm. drugs, a lot of drugs. But this movie takes place like at the end of all of that, right? So kind of like what the free love and the hippies and all that have like started to turn to and become. And I think that's why I spent a lot of time in Vegas for it, because Vegas isn't exactly like this fucking hippie utopia or whatever. Mm -hmm. But all of that to say. That that is who the, the 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 main character. That's Hunter S. Thompson. Okay, that's Johnny him. Depp. Gotcha. Johnny Depp's character. He goes by uh, Roll Doll or some silly in a fucking movie. What is his name in this movie? It is Roll something. Roll. It's a James Raul Duke, Raul, Raul. which is a fake name that he uses often, yeah. like Hunter S. Thompson used. And then his attorney, Doctor Gonzo, named after Gonzo. Gonzo style. And so his, uh, the attorney is really an attorney. Or he's just a fake he's job. A fucking attorney, man. I, I don't know what he is. I, I think this is actual attorney. I don't know. <laughs> he wasn't. Because I thought the plot of the movie was the to, fucking plot. I, well, I don't know because because <laughs> it has so many plots. Because I thought they were going. I thought they were trying to kill somebody in the first. The first they're going to go up and kill somebody because they got a job. The photographer. They they didn't like the photographer. So they had to kill somebody. Or something like they were trying no, to kill they, somebody. They wanted to kill the photographer because he was annoying. I think. So that was it? There is high, man. Yep. Yeah. I made the mistake of taking a bong grip in the middle of this movie. I'm just <laughs> fucking lost. Oh like my I God. have no idea what was going on at some point. Yeah, it was um Oh, well, last thing before we fully get into the movie. Mm -hmm. The budget, eighteen million, box office, thirteen million. Oh. What? Wow, it's a lost money. Lost money, technically a failure, but it kind of lives on like you can see people still dress as Hunter S. Thompson for Halloween. Yeah. You can, the the quote, uh, the whole backcountry thing and uh, he who gets rid of, the, he who makes a beast out of himself gets rid of the pain of being a man are both like linked to this song by Avenged Sevenfold. Like it permeates throughout culture, even though I don't think it hits for us. But one of the reasons why we're watching is because we're doing drug movies. I think that there's a new age drug culture. Like if you've been a raisin shit, like a lot of these drugs you would recognize people talking about from like going to raise or anything like that. Like it, it is, it has, Things that could be meant to us with vlogging and, yeah. and all that, but also, it's it's a mess. Yeah, it looks crazy, but it's a mess. So now we will talk about the movie, kind of, because how can we? Yeah, what? There's nothing to talk about, and so much that happens. E. Yeah. When, so, uh, well, let's talk about the characters. What do you guys think about, uh, you know, Hunter S. Thompson himself? Uh, main character. The main character. He was weird. 
Um, he, it was it was weird because he was so fucked up, but he was still able to articulate in a poo poo manner, like really, like he was able to use big words like really well, I don't even know. so fucked up. I don't know if he actually was communicating or not. Like I feel like everything we saw was from how his like his point of view, where he thinks he's speaking. I clearly. think he was talking to himself. Like I mean, there was a point where yeah. he yeah he does that and like you hear he's like did I say that out loud? Oh yeah, in the car with yeah. uh, Spider Man. Oh yeah, Spider yeah. Boy. Yeah, if I could Tobey Maguire show. Bro, up. I was like, what the fuck? Would you get out of the car? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would have joined them. You would have joined them. I would have joined them. Okay. I would have at least gotten somewhere safe. Pat that checks out based on what happened in LA. <laughs> I believe it. Oh. We don't talk about oh, okay. it. Okay. We'll have to tell you about LA off camera. Oh God. It'll be a whole nother apology oh, video. Oh God. <laughs> 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 we didn't talk about the apology video. Oh no. Uh, well, we're into the movie now. Right. So all right. Well, uh, Kenny, what did you think about Hunter S. Thompson for the little bit you're paying attention of? Whew. Uh him? Yeah. Um I I thought that he was very eccentric and definitely uh, a genius in its own right. Yeah. However, it is not a person I would ever want to hang out with in my entire life. Mm-mm. Yeah. Ever. Too chaotic. Not. They take shit too far sometimes. I I, I I personally, I'm not I'm not like. A sober person i do drink occasionally and you know i've seen you smoke a weed I, I i do smoke a weed or two you know <laughs> a year probably that's about where i'm at but i pre- very much enjoy sobriety and like knowing what's happening around me uh, there's always a point where I, if i get like too drunk or too high i get really uncomfortable i don't like not being in control so for me, watching this movie was extremely painful because I was just, <laughs> I was anxious the whole time for them to, first of all, the, 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 the attorney had so many anger issues that I was so scared that he would do something. He, he had so many weapons and knives and I don't understand why he would hold on to them knowing how many drugs he was doing. Uh, it, the, um, the level of irresponsibility and carelessness I was just not okay with it was giving me so much anxiety and I was uncomfortable the whole time Yeah, I would not live my life like this but you know it's their life so what the fuck am I supposed to say sweet uh, I think Huntress Thompson I haven't read the Rolling Stone article I kind of want to I think he might be a good journalist I don't know I like his well, he's approach a, he's I think. a great writer yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he writes he write really well. Cause I was like, I was like, damn, that's pretty genius. Shit. Oh yeah, for the part, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I would be interested in like seeing more about it, but like it's um, it it, it, it I, like, he's too much of a chaotic force for me to be around. Yeah. Like if oh, I knew absolutely. someone like that, I would hang out with him once and be like, oh yeah, I, I would, would like to never again. Well, I would like dip. I'd be like, I gotta get out of here. Like once you start mm-hmm. naming drugs, I haven't heard of. I would hang out for one good. Yeah. Time. See, like, my my cousin's like like that though. He's like a chaotic genius. Like he's smart as fuck. Like yeah. smart as fuck. Like even when he's fucked up. Just the L.A. cousin. Yeah. Even oh, when he's fucked up, like he could be hella <laughs> fucked up, but he could do math like crazy. Like off his head, no calculator, nothing. <laughs> he's able to do math like crazy and like, ah, he, bro. How it, useful is that? Yeah. All right, so yeah, then we'll move on to the homie Dr. Gonzo. Uh, he's a problem. He is a problem. Yeah, he a problem. feels weird how they keep calling him Samoan, even though he's, he's not definitely Samoan. not Mexican, Samoan. Right? He's Hispanic of some sort. Yeah, well, the lady, Hispanic the, some lady sort. caught him. Uh, uh, yeah, some... she did. She did. She she slurred him. She slurred him. Which she was on top of. But also, though, she was allowed to slur slurred him, too. Who? You missed. It was uh, towards the end of the movie. He gets his pie from this lady, and it's really uh, bad. Yeah, yeah he, bad he was an asshole, though. They have to... Oh, also, do you see a lot of um, a lot of hangover stuff here? It did feel like the hangover. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, forgetting hotel, shit. You need to uh, play back the tapes to figure out yeah, what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, Which the tapes now make sense because I guess I kind of missed the fact that he was <sighs> actually the writer kind of a thing. Like, yeah. Also, yeah. one more thing that made me really, really uncomfortable watching this movie is the m- amount of trash and mess Ooh, and stains so everywhere. Yeah. It's just like, like at the end, towards the end, when he's just sitting on the chair and the camera pans from like the floor and the floor is just uh, water oh, it's just yeah. muddy water uh, not to be confused like, with muddy waters <laughs> yeah i think the first scene it kind of gets me and now we're going to talk about the, well i'm sorry we're still talking about dr gonzo oh yeah so what what you guys is taking on oh, the homie do- dr Motherfucker dr gonzo, gonzo was a creep I, he was I, I initially i liked him 
because yeah. he was like really cool initially, and then he just became a creep. He's an enabler, and he's a problem. He fucking yeah. had that little girl in the hotel. Yeah, which was the bro. Weird. That was weird as fuck. I couldn't put her tell up somewhere, and then when she called him, he said, "As your attorney, I would recommend you go into that drawer and take a sip out of that." Brown and the dumbass took more than a sip. Oh, he took yeah. three. Oh, they were doing adrenochrome at it, right? Yeah. Which, all right, what? That's like Bruh. some QAnon shit, bro. Is that where they got it from? So the only way you can do to get this is from a freshly killed human being. So I ordered the gland. Did you see? Like, so, all right, now I guess. Also, we're- who, like, how do people come up with that? that take some doctor there's probably some cannibal one day that was eating a person he was like you know what i ate this little part Nick, how does talking. this knowledge become right anthropology part of <laughs> okay. and is it real? Like, you know like that's, yes. that's always interested me because like after we watched a documentary about the toad yeah. gland Oh. That people just people just walk around the desert and lick toads to see what oh, really? happens. Like, I mean, yeah. we're trying to find the one that's like who did it first day. and why? <laughs> right? Some dude was like, "I'm gonna eat me some frogs." No, yeah. they just licked them. Yeah, it was probably someone in Florida. Yeah, that sounds like a Florida thing. Right? No, it's they're like uh, desert. The yeah. So we got a. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the overall vibe. All right, mm-hmm. of the fucking uh, movie. Excuse me. I think one of the. All right, so like. The shit with the cops at the end, though, like that hits, right? That hits. With, uh, He's at a. It was a district attorney, yeah, 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 but he yeah. had to like his attorney sends him there while higher than a bitch to fucking doing lines in the middle of the yeah. convention. Yeah. Like. <laughs> and like, I don't understand how like getting away with this shit or like doing it, but yeah, I guess in my mind, I saw this movie once and I was like, oh yeah, it's like it's cool. I like I get why people like it, and like now trying to watch it and like piece it together, and, like what the fuck is supposed to be happening? I think it looks crazy. Terry Gilliam, he did this movie. Um, called brazil and he's done a bunch of other famous stuff i think they did terry's done stuff with um monty python's flying circus so like but like the wide angles like that look the look of the movie hits yeah the look of the movie i think is doing way more heavy lifting than like the story is yeah Yeah, yeah. oh yeah the um, the scene where they are at the convention all that like it is the the one part to me that feels like the most sober which makes sense as well like yeah it's like yeah you just sober the fuck up in a room full of cops uh and that was kind of cool now i'm thinking about it and the cops like talking about like this is what uh, uh, this is a marijuana cigarette and people will do anything to get it like <laughs> to become cool. Oh, I forget the steps that it yeah, took. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, but I was like, I want that on a shirt because that shit was funny. <laughs> but that was like it was like okay. There was also there was he did a monologue in the middle and I wrote it down and I'm a bad movie reviewer, but it was like the thesis of the movie where I think he was talking about like the deterioration of the country and like people doing drugs and like chasing the American dream and how it's not exactly what you think it is and how it's hard to grasp. It was like it was when he was typing and like yeah, narrating to himself yeah, yeah. and I was like. Oh shit! I think that's the point of the movie. Yeah. And yeah. then somewhere he's wearing a lizard tail. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the, the fuck? fuck do I expect? Like, how do I work with this movie? I like that part was not included in the movie, and we just see the aftermath, and we're just like, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we saw the worst of it, but clearly there was something that happened yeah. that we couldn't even watch. Yeah, it uh, was too much. Yeah, when he started seeing everybody as lizards when he first got to the hotel. That was oh cool. my god! See, uh, that would happen to me. Dude, see, this is why I drugs. can't do drugs. Dude, my brain is too fucked up. <laughs> I <laughs> thought they did a really good job of like decepting like what is to be on drugs, like on acid and stuff, because like a lot of movies try to do it, but they over exaggerate it, right? They yeah, it's like always, the carpet moving. And yeah, shit. that was that's realistic because like you don't really see something that's not there. It's always right there. It's just whatever. But like mm. they did it such a realistic job, and like I feel like a lot of drugs that they were doing. I, I don't know. If, some of that shit like Malcane, Malcine, Malcane. Bro. Like the Mascal. Oh, uh, the mescaline. Yeah. Mescaline, yeah. yeah. What yeah. The, I don't know what the fuck that is. I mean, is. they were compounding uh, shit, dog. Compound was that? It? I mean, they were like acid, mescaline, oh, they're putting weed, it okay. yeah, coke. Fucked up. Like, yeah. there was never yeah. just, we are on one drug. Yeah, yeah. It was how many things yeah. can we be I mean, doing and even driving. In the car, yeah, as they were, <laughs> like, that was the opening scene, them in the car. And they did at least four different substances <laughs> while getting a hitchhiker on. <laughs> poor Toby McGuire. Hey, poor, poor, poor Toby McGuire. They saw him later and they were just like, no! <laughs> he knows oh, too what, much. What was the thing that they were breaking and smelling? That wasn't With a drug. That was just a smell salt. So I, I, I think up. that, yeah, I think that, I don't know. Smelling salts. I assume, but also like, I don't know. Maybe they got that drug. custom made drug shit that I've never, I don't know, man. PCP. Salts, yeah. Like, I, mean, I, I was just, salts. the whole time I was also like, yeah, I, was, I kind of just shitty how they kept on getting away with shit. Like, as soon as they were able to park on the street and they let them go inside, I'm like, what the fuck? 
Yeah. He gets pulled over by uh, Gary Busey. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, Will you just give me a kiss? It's really long. <laughs> what? Right what? So I was like, okay, the movie's got a problem with cops, I think. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. If I'm, if I'm checking this out, right? <laughs> it is. I'm like, this was a pick because Ether. I. Ether. Ether. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What yeah. is that? I don't know, man, but he described the way doing Ethan. They're like sniffing it on off the American flag, like <laughs> no, that was American flag was and everywhere. like barely walking, and then like being in that like I don't, I, I, I just know Ether's flammable. Out of all the places to go and do acid, I'm not trying to go to Vegas. Like it, Actually, I feel like it, well, because the desert being bro. like way too high, like on acid in Vegas. Vegas is already very stimulating for me. And I'm That's like, true. this is oh, I'm, it's a lot. It'd be fun. Yeah, I can't handle it. That's just me. I, I like a nice bit of shrooms. I, I like a low key amount. The movie too that. I I'm, can't wrap my mind around this. Restaurants back in the day had telephone wires all around the restaurant, everywhere, because like the waiters would bring the phones. Yeah. So there's so people could be tripping everywhere. I mean, yeah, I mean they were rolling it back so when it went back. I'm sure, but yeah. yeah. That's crazy shit. That's just, then they were smoking. Smoking everywhere. chain, fucking yeah. smoking. The sign that was uh, going into Vegas said marijuana. It is. It's thirty years. The twenty or thirty, 30 years. years. If you're caught in life if you're selling. I was like, wow. It used to. Change. I had a friend who she drove across country and she was like, we had to like damn near bypass Nevada because they were on their way to California. They had so much weed and they were trying to get weed from California. Yeah. And I was like, it's crazy because you can go to Nevada now and get so much weed. And, and just come My home. friend didn't drive there in the 70s. She drove there in like the 20, early 2000s. Like that shit is yeah. crazy. Yeah. So my apologies for this movie is what I'm getting at. Why? <laughs> I hadn't seen it in a while. I thought it was more concrete, but it is as loosey goosey yeah, of a fucking drug movie yeah, if there ever was one. Yeah. yeah. Definitely a drug movie. It wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't a good movie. It was just full on drug. He should have yeah. been in a coma. Like Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Hunter S. Thompson did die in two thousand and five. I uh, wonder sense. like I wish they had like heart monitors on them <laughs> right? and just take like their blood tests every five hours or something yeah. for science for I'm science everyone dehydrated he uh yeah no water no, no water. yeah no water he 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 died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound yeah well, uh, that's weird yeah what yeah. happens Guns. the the whole Ooh. scene of uh gonzo in the tub water like was he trying uh, to kill himself he said every time she hit said no that's saw a minute i just want to throw this record player in the tub with me and i was like i just don't oh, get it what he's got also that rod. song is a huge druggy song what he's got the he's in the bathtub and he's got the rod and he's trying to just touch it just to get the current i'm just like bro <laughs> it should not be funny so, but I, 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 fucking calm down yeah man. It's so dramatic uh, yeah. and uh johnny depp um hits it he, he's like pre fucking jack sparrow you can kind of see where yeah, he he's doing it. Right? Yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah. Jack Depp's got a long career of like being out of it to kind of be too in it. Weird, like he does that really well. Yeah, to where does. I'm like, you can't tell me that you probably don't have Dude. all of these drugs. For real. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, well, um, there's also that one guy wasn't there. Nobody, like Matt, guy from Mad Men. I didn't expect him to be in there. Mad Men? Yeah, he was the hotel mm. bellhop. The no, that guy. Bellhop. You mean from Law and Order SVU? That's Law and Order SVU. I thought that was the guy from Mad Men. It is. It was Christopher uh, Maloney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Why do call. I know his name? Good fucking call. Not Mad Men. No, 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 no. You're thinking of uh, John Hamm slash Don Draper. They do look related. Uh, why can't? I, oh yeah, Christopher John Maloney. Hamm. Hold on. I'm pretty sure it was him. Like a young him. I think it was. It I, is. Let I me. I was uh, watching Amazon. I looked it right up. Oh, nice, perfect. And what we get his movie come out 1990. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Sven, the clerk at the Flamingo Sven. Hotel. Spin. Yeah, man. Law and Order SVU guy. He was also in um, Handmaid's Tale. Never saw that. Her was good. Uh, it is very, very sad. This Define guy. good. Mm-hmm. Ah. So, yeah. we are going to be continuing our Watch of Drug Movies. Also, I need to update you guys. We're going to be doing this live from uh, PopCon. But at PopCon, we can't. Ooh. We're going to have to tailor our conversation just a little bit. What there might mean? be chibis there because oh, it's chibis. a live podcast. Yes, 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 yes. We will still be talking about the movies. Uh, we still can have sticks, our own sticks, opinions. Sticks, sticks, we just need to know the way. That's all. Just putting it in your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, we should, can still cuss and shit. You just should have a... Fudge. Some kind of Loki movie for that. Well, I'm thinking that okay, one... Bears. I'm sure. thinking that one should be either. Not cocaine bears. Well, I was going to do the hi- high school. I'm thinking that one should be either Train Spotting or Requiem for a Dream. That's fine. Let's do that. Like Those one of the are actual movies low-key. with like stories, but we, there's characters and stories we could talk about in them, and not just they did the drug. And like, <laughs> fucking, this <laughs> movie is a movie you can't so talk about. I'm pretty sure this movie watch. we watched doesn't exist. We'll do yeah. Spun. Spun. 
All right. All right. So I picked up my movie. You ready? I'm yeah. What's your movie? We're watching high Pat. school. We're watching what? High school. It's just called high school. High school. All right. Well, I'm gonna read the synopsis for high school. What year did it come out? I'm scared. Uh, I can't remember. Spidey watched. He said it was funny. Yeah, I seen it. It was good. Okay, with Adrian Brody. Uh, 2010. Yeah, it's it's fairly. Well, I guess that's okay. High School, also known as High School, is a 2010 American teen comedy movie starring Adrian Brody. That motherfucker ain't no teen. It is feature length uh, directorial debut of John Stolberg Jr. The film premiered at the Sundance Film Festival and was theatrically distributed by. Oh, that's not anything about the movie. I know there's a movie about drugs. I just remembered. Um,. Forgot the name of the movie, but it's with Reese Witherspoon, and she's like, she takes the she goes uh, down the Oregon Trail, like the whole like sixty day mm-hmm. long trail. Um, she's like a recovering heroin addict, oh, damn. and so she's like on this trail alone, and like there's like flashbacks going to like what she was going through and her conversation with her families and stuff, and like she gets to the end of the trail. It's it's a really good movie. Hmm. Well, definitely about drugs. Oregon Trail or the Appalachian Trail? Appala- I don't Appalachian probably. Maybe because the people do that trail. Yeah, yeah. yeah is it they like the, the really themselves. really long one? Yeah, 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 yeah the really like difficult one. Yeah. yeah, can't let the bears get you. All right, bet. So we will be watching High School. Came out in 2010, starring Adrian Brody. You guys don't have to watch the movie, but you do have to listen to us talk about it. Mm. What we're doing next week. That's what we're doing next week. Bet. That's your pick. All right. Good on you. I thought we were going to do that for uh, Popcorn because it's light. Oh, it is Popcorn. That actually, uh, that would track. Let's do that for Popcorn. So, sorry, we're moving high school the next now. Next movie we're doing Spun. Spun. Next movie we're doing for next week is Spun, oh a 2002 film. Now I shall read the synopsis of that movie. Oh I am boy. in. Oh, that looks like a almost vagina there in the picture. Spun is a 2002 American black comedy crime drama filmed by Jonas Ackerman from an original screenplay by William D. Los Santos. Uh, give me some of the plot. Uh, college dropout Ross uh, Jason Schwartzman is a custom of Spider Mike, uh, a customer of Spider Mike, John Leguizamo. Ooh, ooh, it's a methamphetamine movie. I stopped reading because it looked like it was about to get spoilery. Uh, so we're watching Spun, y'all. Everybody jump in. We're going to be watching Spun and talking about that. Uh, Katie, can you tell me when PopCon is? Silly me. I think it's the last weekend of the month. Last weekend of the month, which means that for PopCon, we'll pick a movie for then. Next movie will probably be Requiem or something like that. Okay. All right. The movie I was talking about is called Wild. Wild. It's a 2013 movie. This has been the Talking Normies podcast. We're the Talking Normies, an affiliate of the Normies. Make sure that you only consume Talking Normies during the daytime. If you ever have to call your doctor about talking Talking Normies, make sure that you let them know it's been hard for at least four hours. The show, not you. Our show's hard all day, all along. All right, bet. We'll see you guys at the next one. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for chilling. Stick around for the raid. And whoever we send you over to, tell them the normies send their regards. Hey. Bye. 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 Bye.